Hello and welcome to the Met Office 10 day trend. Following such a remarkably sunny and warm spring, June has started with a very different flavour of weather, cool and changeable. But that's all about to change as we switch from westerlies to southerlies. In fact, it's already feeling warmer out there this Wednesday afternoon and it's going to become increasingly humid. That's perhaps the most important aspect of the weather during the next few days as winds come from the south. Not only do we have rising temperatures and rising humidity, we've also got lowering pressure, that low pressure approaching from the west. All the ingredients, in other words, for thunderstorms. And we're likely to see two phases of thunderstorms over the next few days. The first one starting on Wednesday evening. More details on these, of course, in our daily national weather. But uh, just briefly, these showers and thunderstorms will start off in the southwest, move into parts of Wales by dawn and uh, approach Northern Ireland during Thursday morning. Hit and miss, of course, but there will be some wet weather, some heavy rain about for southwest England and south Wales into Northern Ireland during Thursday morning. Rumbles of thunder here and there, particularly towards the southwest. The whole system moves its way northeastwards, so some heavy showers pushing through the rest of England into southern Scotland, drier to the northeast of Scotland, fairly windy across the UK, particularly in the west early on, with some strong gusts around coasts and hills. And where you've got the wet weather, of course, it's going to feel unpleasant. But where we do have some breaks in the showery rain and some sunshine coming through, really quite warm and humid. Temperatures up to 27, perhaps 28 Celsius in places. That humidity making it feel warm across the country, even if temperatures aren't anything special in some places. Now, the heavy rain, and by this stage it's mostly just heavy rain rather than the thunderstorms, pushes into Scotland, Northern England, Northern Ireland through the night and then it tends to peel away, ease off, perhaps some further heavy showers coming into the southwest later. However, for many it's a drier interlude as we start off Friday. A muggy night for sleeping with that higher humidity, temperatures in many spots not dropping below the mid-teens and it's going to stay breezy in places as well. But actually the temperatures peak on Friday, the humidity peaks, particularly in the east of the UK, up to 29 Celsius. That would equal the highest temperature of the year so far, recorded on the 1st of May. Perhaps 30 Celsius in one or two spots of East Anglia. But with that heat and the rising humidity and that approaching low pressure, well, the biggest storms are still to come. And they may well originate later Friday over parts of northern France. Before that happens, the odd heavy downpour or thunderstorm could occur through Friday. But actually, Friday itself is mostly dry with sunny spells and, like I say, feeling hot and humid. Then it's really late afternoon that we'll start to see the first signs of these imported thunderstorms coming up through the channel. As always with this sort of thing, it's difficult to predict entirely what will happen with these things as they develop over France during the afternoon and start to migrate northeastwards. But it looks most likely that it's the southeastern quarter of the UK, East Anglia and the southeast of England, where we'll see the biggest impacts from thunderstorms. We're talking predominantly during the hours of darkness on Friday night, Friday evening, really, before the sun goes down, and then overnight. We're talking torrential rainfall, more than 50 millimetres in just a few hours, hail, gusty winds, and, of course, frequent lightning. Not affecting everywhere in this region, but this, where we've got a yellow thunderstorm warning, is the area at highest risk from impacts from those sorts of elements. Torrential rain, hail, gusty winds and frequent lightning. That doesn't rule out getting some showers and thunderstorms elsewhere across the UK because, of course, there will be some overnight and some showery rain moving into the west by the start of Saturday as well because of this frontal system. But the focus during Saturday, as the dip in the jet stream starts to cross the UK and these weather systems move northeastwards, the focus will be more towards the north and the west. Certainly lots of showers or longer spells of heavy rain around first First thing Saturday, we've got our initial batch of thunderstorms clearing from the southeast, but further heavy spells of rain into parts of central and southern Scotland, Northern Ireland, Northern England, parts of Wales, further south and southeast. Yeah, scattered heavy showers, but also some sunny spells breaking through, and western Scotland most likely staying dry with some sunshine. But you can see the extent of the heavy rain across the UK. Again, hit and miss. Not everyone will catch some of these very lively downpours, but where they do occur, they could be impactful. 
It's going to feel a bit cooler, a little less humid, those thunderstorms having cleared the air, but still some warmth towards the east of England, 25, 26 Celsius or so. Certainly fresher coming into the west as the Atlantic influence returns rather than southerlies. We've got westerlies, or at least a, a form of westerlies returning for Saturday night and into Sunday. Still some showery rain around on Sunday morning, but generally the weather is starting to become a little more settled in some shape or form. A lot of cloud and a fresher start to Sunday, but by the time we get to Sunday afternoon, actually, much of England and Wales is mostly dry, some sunshine coming through, some patchy cloud there for the north of England, mainly over the Pennines, and the more persistent rain affecting parts of Scotland, particularly central and western areas. And you can see how the temperatures are back towards average for the time of year. We're talking about low to mid-20s in the south and mid to high teens further north. And then if we zoom out, you can see that we've got some weather systems moving through later Sunday, but these are weak systems because they're running in on top of an area of high pressure. And this high pressure building across the south of the UK and shifting the jet stream a bit further north once again. And that really sets the theme for the rest of next week. This, for Tuesday the 17th of June, is the most likely weather pattern when we run the computer models many, many times. This comes out as the most likely weather pattern for that Tuesday. And it shows high pressure near the Azores, this lovely group of islands uh, just to the west of Portugal, extending its influence towards the UK, an extension of the Azores High, in other words, shifting weather systems further north and keeping these blue colours, this rainfall, mostly across northern and western Scotland, where it will be breezy at times. There'll be perhaps some heavy rain over western hills. But otherwise, for much of the UK, with that high pressure building in, it's drier and it's more settled. Now, if you think 35% chance of that weather pattern occurring is sounds quite low, well, there are other weather patterns that have uh, another uh, that are almost as likely to occur that look very similar to it. So this is the most likely, the extension of the Azores High. Another, the second most likely weather pattern is high pressure over the south of the UK, very similar in flavour really. And another one there on the bottom left of the screen, high pressure just to the west of the UK. So yeah, that's the most likely, but there are other flavours of high pressure that are coming through and all these different types of weather patterns are coloured in different colours on this probability plot that goes out for the next two weeks. But essentially, the reds, oranges and yellows represent weather patterns where high pressure is close to the UK. They're just different positions of that high pressure. But as you can see, that's the favoured scenario going out to the next two weeks higher pressure close to the UK, rather than these blues, which is lower pressure close to the UK. Although the predominant blue colour that's coming through is northwesterly winds, and that's just where the high pressure has just sunk a bit further to the southwest to allow a bit more of a northwesterly to come through. So even that's not that different to what we're expecting uh, throughout next week. And that is, if we go to Thursday, the high pressure to the south, to ebb and flow, it's likely to uh, occasionally cover much of the UK, like this weather pattern here on the bottom left, the whole of the UK affected by that high pressure, or perhaps heading slightly further north as per this pattern. But the most likely pattern remains high pressure ridging across the south, keeping weather systems into the north, but mostly these are weak systems. And Saturday the 21st of June, similar again. The summer solstice, High pressure ridging towards the UK, most places dry, but other weather patterns are coming through in the modelling, not that different to the main most likely pattern. So, yeah, there's lots of different colours on this chart for the next two weeks, but there is one significant theme coming through. These colours, the different colours, don't necessarily mean that we don't have a clue what's going on. We do have a strong clue what's going on. All that these colours represent are different positions of the high pressure because we're expecting it to ebb and flow across the UK throughout next week. It's just uncertainty about which days we'll see the different positions of that high pressure. And just to hammer home the point, this is the pressure anomaly from the European modelling 
and it shows throughout next week averaged for the whole week and averaged uh, compared with the uh, usual position of high pressure much higher than normal pressure is expected across the UK particularly towards the south and that would lead to higher than average temperatures. Now those temperatures will vary depending on where you are in the UK because of course it's the south where we're more likely to see drier and sunnier weather and towards the north it's more likely to be at times changeable. This shows the temperature trend by day those are the red boxes and by night those are the blue boxes compared with the average for the time of year that's the red and the blue lines for the day and night temperatures. The south is represented by this plot and the north represented by this plot just to show you the peak of the temperatures for the next two weeks is actually this coming Friday for the south and then we've got this drop off as the cooler air returns back to average for the weekend but then this steady climb in temperatures although the uncertainty the spread in these temperatures gets bigger through the week so a build in temperatures we're expecting the mid to high 20s rather than the 30s across some southern and southeastern parts through next week. Meanwhile, northern areas, and this is representative of somewhere in central Scotland, closer to average to next week, but perhaps an increase towards the very end of the week. So, yeah, it's going to turn warmer as higher pressure builds in. But don't expect to return to that widespread and prolonged spring sunshine because there will be some weak systems coming into the north at times, some cloud, rain and breezes across Scotland in particular, and perhaps some of those weak systems could bring a bit more cloud elsewhere across the UK. However, on balance, through next week, it's going to be warmer and more settled compared with the first 10 days of June, especially across the south. No heat wave expected, but certainly a quieter spell after the thunderstorms of the next few days. But of course, that's the most significant weather coming up and we'll keep updated on all the details of those thunderstorms right here through our YouTube channel. Bye-bye.